In this video, we'll be talking about astrocytes. When we think about our brain, we can have neuronal cells. And alongside the neuronal cells, we have other cell types known as glia. Astrocyte is one type of glia. By the way, alongside astrocytes, there are many other glial cell types in brain, such as microglia, oligodendrocyte, and each of these cell types have their defined role. And they interact with each other. And that's what is important for the brain function. In this video, we'll be talking more about the astrocyte. So let's talk about astrogliogenesis. That means how astrocytes are born. So in the brain, neurogenesis happens from the radial glial cell progenitors. So radial glial cell progenitors can divide and give rise to a new radial glia, or it can give rise to a newborn neuron. But this happens in the very early stage of the brain development. As the brain develops more, eventually these neurogenic progenitor, which were supposed to give rise to neuron, switch their fate to a gliogenic progenitor. Now these progenitors, instead of giving rise to neuron, would eventually give rise to astrocytes. So that means astrocytes are born from the later derived radial glia itself. So neurogenesis to gliogenesis switch is an active area of research in developmental neuroscience. Let's talk about the functions of astrocytes and how astrocytes are important for our brain. So astrocytes play a vital role in the brain. Astrocytes participate in synapse formation and they regulate synaptic activity. Secondly, astrocytes participate in blood-brain barrier formation. Each of these two functions are very important for brain proper functionality and uh, brain development as well. So let's talk about the, how astrocyte can regulate glutamate glutamine cycle at the synapse. Because astrocyte's key role is to form the tripartite synapse. That means one neuron synapsing with another and astrocyte being the third component in the synaptic uh, cohort. So glutamate is one of the major neurotransmitter in vertebrate brain. So glutamate is an excitatory neurotransmitter. That means it lead to an excitatory uh, change in the post synapse. So here is a synapse in a zoomed in version. It's a glutamatergic synapse. So in the this is the presynapse, this is the post synapse, and this is the astrocyte forming the third component of the tripartite synapse. When the action potential reach the nerve terminal, there would be release of neurotransmitter in the synaptic cleft. And that would bind to the glutamatergic receptors on the postsynapse. This is a glutamatergic synapse, so obviously the neurotransmitter is glutamate and the postsynaptic receptors are glutamate receptors. So glutamate is synthesized from glutamine in the neurons. And this is done by the enzyme glutaminase. Now actually, glutamine comes from the astrocyte. And glutamine is uptaken by the neuron and converted to the glutamate and loaded onto these vesicles. Now question is, how does astrocyte help? So in the synaptic cleft, glutamate is not there for eternity. Glutamate is released, it stays there for a while, but eventually the glutamate would be uptaken by the astrocytes. And this is done by excitatory amino acid transporters. That is how astrocytes ensure that extra glutamate can be removed quickly and that might not lead to an overactivation of the synapse. Astrocyte convert glutamate into glutamine with the help of glutamine synthetase and bring back that glutamine, that means the raw material to produce glutamate in the neuron. And this is how the glutamine glutamate cycle happens in a tripartite synapse. So it turns out too much glutamate is actually bad. When there is too much glutamate, there is high level of excitability, uncontrolled excitability. This situation is known as excitotoxicity or glutamate induced excitotoxicity. And these kind of excitotoxicity like situation can lead to death of the neuron. And this happens in many diseases. One such example could be epilepsy where there is hyper excitability and too much glutamate. So excess glutamate in the synaptic cleft is a big problem that can be solved by the astrocytes because astrocyte can uptake some of the glutamate and maintain this balance.
So this is a very important role for proper synaptic functioning. Now astrocyte can also secrete gliotransmitter. This is a concept that's not present in the textbook, but this is a really recent concept. It turns out it is thought that, okay, astrocyte can also participate in synaptic communication. There are specific type of uh, neurotransmitter that is secreted by the neurons, which can also be uh, recepted by the astrocyte enfits and astrocyte can in response release gliotransmitters which can also influence neuronal activity so they talk to each other in a bidirectional way and what is the implication of these bidirectional crosstalk is still a active area of research now astrocytes form or help to form the blood brain barrier so inside our brain there are so many blood vessels but everything that is inside the blood cannot reach our brain because there is a selectivity filter and that is the blood brain barrier. It prevents random thing or random solute in circulating in the blood to prevent uh, to enter the brain. So this is the brain and this is the blood. It prevents all the solute molecule to pass. But how that is useful? So blood brain barrier restricts the passage of pathogens, harmful metabolites, large hydrophilic molecules inside the brain and it allows the selective uh, permeabilization of certain substances such as glucose and other molecules which are absolutely essential for the brain. So this is how one portion of the blood brain barrier look like. So this is a blood vessel and you can see there are capillary endothelial cells, there are astrocytic feet, there are pericytes which forms these blood brain barrier. So the blood brain barrier is actually at a molecular level the tight junctions between the endothelial cells. This allow the diffusion of CO2, O2 hormones and small polar molecules but it prevents uh, the passage of plethora of molecules. When we think about astrocytes, they are homogeneous population or heterogeneous population. One of the classical view, they were like astrocytes, they are homogeneous population in the brain. But with the development of current methodologies, it has been seen that they are not homogeneous. They are extremely heterogeneous population. And these kind of understanding came from the development of single cell RNA sequencing. From the mouse brain, when single cell RNA sequencing was performed, it was observed that there are several different types of astrocyte which has unique molecular signatures. Question is, do they have unique functionality? And it's also important to note that these type of astrocytes are present in different proportion in the different brain regions, questioning its functionality and influence on brain development. So this is also an area of active research where scientists are trying to understand how astrocyte diversity is important for the brain. Now, not only astrocyte diversity, when we think about a cell, we should also think about cellular states. Just like we are sometimes angry and happy, astrocytes could be sometimes reactive as well. That means they are super angry or pathogenic. So this reactive astrocyte concept is a newly developed concept and these reactive astrocytes are heavily implicated in disease pathology. Let me give you some examples. So astrocytes are implicated in several neurodegenerative and uh, neurodevelopmental disorders. So one such very common example is the involvement of astrocytes in Alzheimer's disease. In the Alzheimer's disease, there are uh, pathological hallmarks which we already know, the beta amyloid plaques. So the astrocytes interact with the beta amyloid plaque and it can also interact with the microglial cells which ultimately lead to an overall inflammation. So microglial cells interact with, uh, secretes certain molecules which are converting the astrocyte to a reactive state, making them kind of angry. And that sort of like has, ha, had an adverse effect in terms of neuroinflammation. So the point is astrocyte, microglia and neurons talk to each other. And the language by which they talk is via cytokines. And ultimately, these kind of crosstalks lead to brain damage and neuroinflammation. And that is a common pathology for many disorders. Not only Alzheimer's disease, but it has been implicated in Huntington's chorea, also in amyotropic lateral sclerosis. These are recent understanding 
and the uh, literature link is provided in the description if you just want to take a look at it. Now, so let us summarize what we learned about astrocytes. So first we talked about the function, two major function in the brain. One is it take part in the neuromodulation and the synaptic activity. And the second thing is take, it is taking part to form the blood brain barrier, which prevents harmful substance to come in. Then we looked at and focused at how astrocyte modulate the synaptic function. We talked about the gliotransmitters. We also focused some aspects of the blood brain barrier formation and ultimately we looked at how astrocytes are involved in neurological disorders. So I hope this was useful. If you like this video, give it, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. All my social media links are provided in the description. Don't forget to follow us. Support our channel using super thanks, which is a heart shape icon with dollar in it in the right side of your video. You can click on it and pay via Paytm, PayPal or UPI. Stay tuned for more.